right, so if you read the title, you already know what I'm gonna be doing here. So I got one of two shipping containers, one that uh, kind of reorganized here with all the bulk of everything. I'm actually making it a storage container. Put all these racks in uh, about a week back. I have a ton of tires. Um, so I guess halfway is some of it is uh, get your stuff organized and then I want to put lights in here. But the thing is, any kind of lighting I put in here, I don't want to make it permanent um, as in getting power to the container. So what I got going on, well, number one, you can measure out how you want to put your lights. I have my lights kind of starting further back. Um, I think, what was that? I think that was like 14 feet or something like that. Back this way. And then uh, just measure the halfway point in between the next mark. Got another mark up there. And then uh, one on the further back because, of course, the further in the back it goes, the darker it gets. So I just want to keep the lights in the back of the shop or at the shop. The container, uh, I'm not too worried about over here because bulk of everything's going to be over here. Actually, the GoPro's doing a pretty good amount. It's a, Actually, it looks a little bit darker in my eyes than what the GoPro's showing. But uh, you can still see. I mean, there's tons of shadows. So uh, I'll show you what kind of lights I got going on here. All right, so this is what I got going on here for lights. They're like a metal cage vandal resistant. Um, I forget, there's another name for them also. I got them on Amazon because uh, I saw them when I was walking around Home Depot. They were like 37 or 40 bucks. I was gonna, I was about to buy three of them there. I'm like, wait, I'm like, man, that seems kind of expensive. Well, on Amazon, they're like 20 bucks. So I bought three of them there. And uh, I don't know, they look like those ones in the old ships. Uh, they're, in a, they're an actual metal cage and everything. Uh, so I got those lights, they're not super bright. I got 150 watt, I guess, compatible LED bulbs for them. Um, it doesn't need to be super bright in here. I just need to have lighting so you're not tripping. You can see what you need to grab on the racks or something like that. Um, so this is the light though right here. And what I've done, so I got these uh, welded boxes, uh, pretty much from what I've been doing the entire shop with. And uh, I drilled out the mounting areas on the light right here, just a little bit more to get a little bit more uh, uh, flex in the holes here so I can actually just uh, screw them straight onto the welded box and uh, do all the wiring in the box. Before, I was gonna put two by fours up or do some runners and weld them in and all this type of stuff. And I was like, wait a minute, I think this might fit. And it did. And that's perfect. And I'm just gonna honestly, I'm just gonna weld this box up to the top of the ceiling because uh, I don't want to drill anything. I don't want to put any holes in the roof or in the ceiling um, in the container. Just keep it watertight as much as possible. And then you can just put all your wiring in there. All the wiring I'm doing here is going to be super just easy. I'm not going to do anything code-wise. I don't even think putting electricity in a container is probably code-wise. There's probably a way you can do it. But that's what I got. This is how I'm doing it. And uh, I just got some 12-2 uh, uh, Romex. Uh, that's been sitting in the garage for a while, so I'm just going to run all the boxes there. And then I, there's a bunch of these uh, hooks up along the entire edge, and I'm just going to kind of loop the Romex through there to bring them up to the next phase for the lighting. And then, like I said, I don't want to permanently mount the shipping container to any kind of hard wire uh, to get power to it. So what I've done was I went and bought... Uh, a shore power adapter, uh, like what you have on your RV or whatever trailer you want to do to charge a battery. Um, so I got one of these plugs right here, and it's weather tight and all that good stuff. You know, weather tight plug. And you can just plug an extension cord into the container to turn on the lights, and then put all your wiring in the back. And then when you're done, unplug the extension cord, put it back to in the shop or in your garage or whatever you might do, and then you're good. There's you can move your container around if need to be. I know, like, I, heck, I've moved my containers three times now. I can never find the right spot. So I just want to be able to have that maneuverability if need to be. Yeah, I sure there's a bunch of stuff in there, but whatever. At least it's not hardwired to anything. I don't need to, it's it's easy to get to, it's easy to do. So that's what I got going on. That's what I'm gonna do. I already got all the measurements up. I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do next. All right, so I'm just putting these things uh, two feet away from the side here. So, just gonna get my marker out so I know where to clean this like powder coating paint off. This stuff's thick. So, 
It's just a quick project. I'm not here to be super accurate or perfect about it or anything like that. All right. Got my area to clean off. And then pretty much wires and come straight down behind the camera and just start looping through those loops. All that good stuff, so uh, clean this sucker off real quick. <laughs> Perfect though, too. Oh, it's bent that one a little bit, or it's bent. I've been back. You got pliers? Loosen the gears. So I'm gonna do that to the other two real quick, and uh, we'll start getting these boxes welded on. So I got the welder, I got the box. I know this is not the most convenient setup, but uh, I don't have any flux core wire to uh, do this. Uh, ground down a little spot over there, put the clamp on those little hooks. Uh, so if anything, I'm not gonna be able to talk after this. I'm gonna start the generator up. I uh, got my extension cord going. So uh, we'll see how much power the welder actually has with that extension cord. It's not the biggest one out there. I think it's only a, a 12, or maybe, no, I think it's maybe a 12 extension cord. Um, but yeah, they don't need, need much power to get those things welded up. So uh, start up the generator, get these suckers welded up. And I just realized I'm an idiot. I forgot I had all this stuff to not run off of a, a tiny cable. So plug this thing in, maybe, just like that. And then I have my big welder extension wire here. So uh, let's run that real quick. Yeah, this, uh, this is going to definitely work a lot better. I was wondering what the heck it was. I was like, maybe I was, because I've done this kind of welding before. That's why I have this Millermatic here for any like on-site welding. So I can just take a generator and this, the Millermatic 211 is a lot lighter than my Hobart. And uh, that's why I got my small tank. Because usually if I got a hard face, I'll, because hard face is flux core. And uh, you uh, weld with the 7525 mix and the flux core, you'll have very, very little chance of any porosity whatsoever. And a really, really nice clean weld. But uh, I did stick one side before the breaker kept on popping on the generator. Um, but we'll, we'll, let's try this again the right way. You want choke? Those suckers ain't going anywhere. You can probably hang off them. Probably break the box more than anything. Uh, so now I'm gonna start uh, running all my Romex through, and then uh, came over here and I marked this because uh, it's gonna protrude out a little bit for uh, that piece, a little piece of freaking molten metal land in my hand. Uh, it's gonna protrude out a little bit, so I want to make sure, like, if I'm doing something through here, I'm not gonna smack this. It's up and out of the way, and I'm tall enough I can reach that from the outside and plug it in. Then wires can go up and around. 
and then just uh, loom through or just zip tie it up, go through the box, break over the typical wire and stuff. Okay, so I let the container air out a little bit. So, uh, I don't die of poisoning. I got just, just a little bit here. And drill these suckers out. Just a little bit. Nothing too much. Don't want to catch these wires. Just like that. That's all they need. This is just your uh, typical wire on type of stuff now, I guess. Yeah. I just can't really see much. So I'm putting in lights. Snap that knock out. You guys can uh, hoo and haul all you want, but this is just the way I'm doing it, man. It's really not that big of a deal. I could put even the Romex clamps, but I don't have any. I can probably do that next time around. I didn't think that far ahead. Because I've been using MC cable for my shop this entire time, so. Let's see how good this works. Okay. All right. It's good to go there. Now, where I put my wire, and that's it. What's up, boy dogs? What you doing, Mister Curious? Get a good twist on this thing first. Okay. All right, and screwdriver. Okay. Oh, I got it. Oh, shit. oh, oh, I see it. I see it. whole thing twists off, throw away your cardboard, then uh, go get a light bulb. And this, this is actually glass too, which is pretty amazing about that, honestly. So, let me get my bulb real quick. These are just some Amazon special uh, 150 watt, or they're technically, they draw only 7 watts or something like that, but they're 150 watt compatible. Amazon special, like four pack was maybe 10 bucks, maybe 10 bucks or something like that. And lock this in, back on. Get your screwdriver. And I lost it already. There we go. So I guess if you guys want to, you can even do all the wiring inside of this thing self. But again, I didn't want to drill holes. This is all aluminum. You don't want to drill holes through the container, less chance of leaks or whatever nonsense because, you know, I get snow here and, well, you know, I don't know. This just feels a little bit better, a little bit less chance of bad stuff happening. I was thinking too, like, maybe I'll hit something with a box, but I mean, I don't know. If they last, they last. If they break, they break. It is where it is. I'll change it out with something else, uh, but I like them. Good overglow. They look kind of classy too. So, uh, all right, I'm just gonna get the rest of the wiring and uh, get the rest of these suckers on there. These things were, I think, were like 10 bucks. These plugs, if I remember right. 
makes life so much easier. Yeah, because I mean, I looked around Home Depot, they didn't have anything like this. You just gotta, either gotta go to like an RV store or just go online where they pretty much have everything. You don't have to drive 45 minutes down to the store to get something like this and then realize they don't even have it. So, save the trip. <laughs> And yes, you want to put that back cover on first and then do all this, but this is very temporary. Force stuck on something. There it is. That's actually a lot brighter in here than I thought. I will take it. Oh man, that's way better. Yeah, I can live with that. I can definitely live with that. That's really nice. Sweet. I get, I'm not getting zapped either, so I'm good. I can see all the nonsense that happened here. But I got, at least I got some empty the shelves. Yeah, these are nice. I like it. Well, heck, there you go. There's uh, my slightly simplified, overcomplicated way of uh, getting your shipping container lit up. I guess, I think a very convenient way. You don't have to hardwire anything in. Um, there you go. If, uh, if you liked the video, just uh, drop a comment down below. If you think I'm stupid, let me know. I, I already know I am just a little ways, so nothing new to me. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. Uh, just a small, short video project. Uh, other than that, please like the video, please subscribe, and have a good one.